<laughs> All right. So how you been? It's been been a little bit since I talked to you. Where to begin, dude? Still depressed and anxious and just life's kicking my ass. But you know, we're here. We do this to escape our our troubled reality. Yeah, we so talk about other people. <laughs> we we escape our troubled reality by talking about other people's really terrible reality. Well, normally it's just like the supernatural, but today you pick something a little weird. It is weird. I mean, I think it's it definitely counts as supernatural. Do I believe in this? Not at all. But it, if it is true, it is supernatural. So you're telling so. all these redditors to go fuck themselves? Is what you're saying? No, I, I actually so. Later on, for those of you who are interested, we're doing something a little different today. And after we're done with this story, um, I asked I asked a couple of people on Reddit if I could use their stories. So also, you can shit on them and say he doesn't believe in them. No, I promised them. I mean, I will say if I don't believe it or not, but I promised them I would not make fun of their story. <laughs> so but you I'm, basically already are. <laughs> I'm not making fun of them. Anyways, today's topic is uh, doppelgangers. Um, for those of you who don't know what a, do a doppelganger is, um, it's basically a. It's copy. how Austin looks like the Zootopia rabbit, like so, <laughs> like like Judy Hopps's father. They look so alike. It's like that. It's a doppelganger, basically. Like like hey, you wouldn't know who's who. Hey, that that rabbit's got some moves because he's got like three hundred children. <laughs> So I am proud to emulate that man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So pretty much Fernando explained it and by bringing Zootopia into this again. So yeah, there's that. When I edited this, I'm going to put his, his picture right next to you. <laughs> Just right here. You put a pitchfork next to me. You too. really do look next, like, like him though. It's, it's crazy. Can you give me a pitchfork too? I'm not giving you a pitchfork. I don't, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I will teach you. <laughs> All right. Well, I say we just hop right into this because uh, before we start talking about more Zootopia, I just want to <laughs> get talking. So, as uh, Fernando talked about a little earlier, a doppelganger is defined as a biologically unrelated lookalike or double of a living person. Mm -hmm. While exceedingly unlikely, it is completely within the realm of possibility that you could someday find yourself running into somebody that looks identical to you in almost every single way. Hauntingly, while this statistic may seem improbable, the fact is this. There is almost certainly somebody in the world right now who possesses your every feature, and there may be more than one. Have you ever run into somebody you thought looked like you or that somebody pointed out to you? Mm, me personally, no. Uh, there's like, I mean, one time I think my little sister was like, she sent me a screenshot of like when she was on Tinder and this one dude kind of looked like me. It was kind of a stretch, but like I could kind of see it at the time. Was uh, it just like a hair thing? Like, you know, I've seen people like, oh, I see a hair coming. Oh, I think that's somebody. And then it's definitely no, no, not. no, no, no. It was kind of the face or like because he was wearing a hat in his picture. But like our facial structure was kind of similar. Yeah. OK, that makes sense. OK. But yeah, I've seen people be like, hey, this guy looks like you. It's like, no, <laughs> no. I do think I mean, first of all, I. I think there was one time, it was like an eighth grade, we were at a basketball game, and somebody's like, oh, that guy looks just like you. And I looked at him, and he I didn't think he looked anything like me, but was I do think... No, he was not a rabbit. An anth anth anthropomorphic rabbit. <laughs> it, was, it was actually the other team's mascot. It was just a rabbit. <laughs> that guy's just like you, Austin. <laughs> yeah, give him a pitchfork. He looks just like him. Yeah, no. Um, so I would go with... No, that doesn't really count. So, okay. So neither one of us really have doppelganger experiences so all right scientifically speaking this concept makes quite a bit of sense as there is only so much genetic diversity to go around this rings especially true among humans for reference oxford university claims that central chimpanzees alone have a genetic variation percentage of around 0.18 percent humans on the other hand only have a measly 0.037 percent and in case you're wondering, the most genetic diverse species on this planet is a split gill mushroom, which has a genetic diversity of 20%. So a mushroom is more diverse than we all are. I mean, you look identical. No, we don't. We do. Just put it, like, get your face. Literally, right. I get don't, your, get your face I don't think there's one thing about us that's <laughs> identical. Like even close. Oh, come on. No, I really no, don't. Maybe no, our no. height. <laughs> Where are you? I'm five foot eight. I'm five foot eight. 
Oh, there you go. We're twins. Although I think you're lying. I think you're five seven. Uh, according to New York, according to my license, I'm five foot seven, but I am five foot eight according to my doctor. Yeah, you're you're definitely five seven. You just wear taller shoes. Anyway, Do you wear boots. What are you talking about? I don't wear boots. I wear Nikes. In the winter, I wear boots. I know you wear boots. Wear my LL Beans. Your little dicky boots, dude, in your Carhartt <laughs> jacket. No, I don't own a Carhartt. Anyways. Amazing DNA sequencing facts aside, there is a sub-definition of the term doppelganger that is significantly less explainable, even with science, than that of its predecessor, and it's a lot more applicable to what we like to talk about. According to Germanic folklore, a doppelganger is also defined as a ghostly twin apparition of a person. Even more horrifying is the belief that their presence typically signifies future misfortune. You know, when you say more horrifying, it doesn't sound very horrifying. Oh, it's horrifying. Oh, yeah, it doesn't sound like Should it's Should I horrifying. say less horrifying? Even less horrifying. <laughs> well, the way you talk, it sounds less horrifying. You should be even more horrifying. You sorry. Put some soul into sorry, it. Sorry, I'm sorry. Even more horrifying is <laughs> the belief go. that their presence typically signifies future misfortune. Okay, but where did you get this definition from? Where did I get this from? Yeah, like, I, I got it from... Ne- like, what is, who defines it as a ghostly twin apparition of a person... Merriam-Webster. Really? I swear to God, that's where I got this from. Mm. Well, you better send me a picture. So I'm going to dunk on you with those facts. (laughs) So with that definition of mine from Merriam-Webster Dictionary, which is a very official dictionary, and it's a very legit definition. I mean, I guess if you believe in it. It's kind of fake, though, isn't it? Kind of fake, fake news. It's a fake dictionary? Yeah, it's fake news, dude. It's just what big media, it's what the (laughs) fake news media wants you to believe. Anyways, throughout the past few centuries, many encounters involving notable figures have been documented. Some examples include Abraham Abraham Lincoln, Queen Elizabeth I, and Catherine the Great. Despite the involvement of these historic names, the most well-documented case ever recorded involves a rather innocuous schoolteacher from France named Emily Saget. I've never seen any doppelgangers of Abraham, Queen Elizabeth, and I don't know who, like, I've never actually seen a picture of Catherine the Great. So, according to lore, uh, Abraham Lincoln one day had a dream where there was him, and in a mirror, there was another version of him, but he was significantly more pale. And he brought it up to his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, who was apparently very physically abusive to Abraham Lincoln, by the way. I don't know if you knew that or not. Um, I know there's a theory that he was, like, closeted i'm not i don't know about that i mean maybe i don't know but she was physically abusive to him um and she also took kickbacks and bribes but anyways she uh for some reason i guess she's like a soothsayer or something like that um and uh she told him that it represented that he would make it through his first term alive but he would be killed in his second term so but so a soothsayer is a psychic that what it interprets dreams a soothsayer? Yeah, it's like a, a psychic, yeah, basically. How about, I mean, you, how about you define what a soothsayer is instead of just saying words that don't make sense? <laughs> soothsayer is like a mystic, you know, like, looking in the crystal ball, I see your future. Like I know Nancy Reagan was a fucking throat goat demon, allegedly. <laughs> throat That's what I know demon. about first ladies. <laughs> no, seriously, apparently she gave some nasty fucking head, dude. Like, I'm just Jesus saying, dude, shout, shout out Nancy Reagan, dude. <laughs> This is the kind of stuff you will not find on any other podcast, especially a exactly, spooky one. <laughs> Just the start of podcast of historic figures that gave mean sexual favors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Emily Saget was born on January 3rd, 1813 in Dijon, France. A Capricorn, Austin. Well, backs of her childhood are relatively scarce. Scarce? Scarce. I like scars. It is believed that she herself claimed that nothing notable occurred during her early years. The only thing that seemed remarkable about her at this point was that she started her career as a teacher at the age of 16. It's pretty young, but I guess at the time that was like halfway through your life expectancy. That's middle aged. From the get go, Emily was a natural teacher and was well liked by both students and staff alike. She was said to be relatively reserved and polite but was more than capable of reining unruly pupils in when it was needed. Her skills and character were so well appreciated that when she was eventually fired from the school, what? 
She was still received a glowing recommendation from her superiors. So why was she fired? That's what why I'm was asking. She for why was she know. fired? Fernando? I don't know. I haven't gotten there yet. Why Get was to she the fired? Topic. Get to the center of this. The public demands to know why was no she fired? No one demands to know. No one knows who <laughs> Emily Saget is except you and a couple of redditors. <laughs> For most of Emily's tenure at her school, everything was relatively normal. That was until, however, her doppelganger decided to make her debut at her workplace. According to various students and faculty members, an exact copy of Emily would appear randomly around the school. Sometimes it would even be in the same room as Emily. When the apparition did appear, Emily would immediately become drained of color become extremely lethargic and appear very tr- and appear in a very trance-like state. Oddly, only other people could see the figure and Emily would later recount that she had no idea that this was occurring until she heard about it. Sadly, and a bit unfairly, this entity would scare people within her workplace so much that the school officials felt that they had no choice but to let Emily go. And for the next 16 years, she would go on to experience the exact scenario and quite frankly, a ridiculous 19 times. Yeah, fired 19 times. But every single time, given a good review. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, every place you get fired, like, you're getting fired from someone pulling you into their office, making, hey, we got to let you go, man. But but here's a here's an envelope with a personal recommendation from me. So, okay. So this woman has been fired or will be fired throughout the course of her story 19 times. She apparently has a doppelganger that she cannot see, but everybody else can. Yeah, so, that makes no sense. It's a little odd. As a result of her frequent dismissals, word got around about her situation, and Emily was forced to seek employment at increasingly distant schools. Uh, no. Eventually, uh, Emily had to go so far that she found herself at a Latvian school, or Latvian school, for girls called <laughs> Pensionat of New Elk. It is here that her condition would be documented in great detail and ultimately cement her into the history books. Like every other school she worked at, people quickly took a liking to Emily when she started teaching at the Girls Only Academy in 1845. Before long, though, her doppelganger would immediately revert to form and begin its antics. What were those antics, you may find yourself asking? Well, initially, it started off rather innocently, as students would simply ask where Mademoiselle Sarge was located. Typically, The question would be answered by multiple people giving different answers. For example, one would say she was in the garden, while another would suggest that she was in an office. At first, faculty and students simply wrote this off as misinformation. That all changed one day when Emily was giving a structure or giving a lecture to 13 students inside of a classroom. While writing something on the chalkboard, students observed an exact replica of their school mistress materialized next to her and began to imitate all of her movements minus the actual chalk okay so she's writing something on the board and this thing just appears basically right to the right or left of her and is doing the exact same thing but has no chalk in its hand it's just copying what she is doing but apparently it can't actually like materialize the items it's just her her body is it just a mirror um, maybe, maybe these people, maybe these children have never seen a mirror in their entire life. I mean, it is the 1800s. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past anyone. But the school is actually like a very posh, high end girls academy. Um, a lot of like very wealthy people in the area are sending their children to this school. So it's not like it's just some podunk little town. These are like very wealthy children. So. I'm sure their homes had mirrors. This feels just like this feels like a creepy pasta, like that there's no actual facts behind it. it. Like, is Emily Chazé a real person? Depends. So this apparition freaked out the children so much that it prompted one of them to report the incident to another faculty member. Vaguely intrigued and probably not believing a word the kid had to say, the headmaster quizzed the class on what they saw. To his surprise... All 13 pupils unanimously reported the exact same recollection of events. This is kind of like the uh, the aerial school UFO incident in a way where like you have all the kids giving the same exact story. You know, part of me wants to believe that it's like, did you ever see the movie The Prestige directed by Christopher Nolan? No. <clears throat> well, it's like the 1800s, right? And it's Hugh Jackman, Christian Bale. They're fighting 
they're both like magicians trying to be like the ultimate stage performer but like they realize one can't thrive with the, while the other one thrives like there can only be one mm-hmm. and so Hugh Jackman makes it his mission to perform the disappearing man where like he goes into a box and then comes out of a different box but he's like how can I do this and then Christian Bale's character had perfected it and he's trying to figure out trying to figure out like how does he do it and so he goes Hugh Jackman goes to Nikola Tesla played by David Bowie and that's a a good uh casting right there actually it's, it's a great movie like I'm not even kidding and Nikola Te- Tesla makes him a machine, but he says don't use it because it's it's like basically like it's evil as fuck. And what the machine does, it actually ends up cloning Hugh Jackman every time he does the disappearing man. So like one Hugh Jackman disappears and then another one appears and it's supposed to be him, but it's a cloned version. Mm-hmm. And long story short, at the end, it's revealed that Christian Bale was able to do it because he just had a twin. What if Emily just has a twin? Maybe. I don't know. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, you make a good point. Maybe Emily just had a twin. I mean... And they're just fucking with people. I- I'm not going to lie. None of this is believable to me at this point. <laughs> like, nothing even close. I mean, the details are... You're saying somebody can't just, like, appear out of thin air? I don't think they can, no. Mm, interesting. And I but get it, like... aliens can? Interesting. They're different. Oh, they got technology they? to back them oh, up. Oh, okay, okay. Not okay. just beliefs. They're not just living on a... Aliens aren't just living on a prayer. How do you know they aren't? How do you know they're not just <laughs> jamming out to Bon Jovi? <laughs> Maybe they are. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Who knows? But, no, I'm sorry. Emily Sage so far, I I think it might just be the over overactive imagination of children at this point. Or oh, this is an urban legend that never happened? Or it's an urban legend that never happened. Possible. While there are various instances of Emily's doppelganger mimicking her every move, there are also plenty of instances where the body double went off and did its own thing. One example of this occurred during a luncheon with a coworker. When Emily got up and out of her chair to get something, a version of her took shape immediately where she was previously seated and did not budge. Like many other times before, Emily immediately became drained of energy until it dissipated into the ether the fuck is the ether just the air the the void whatever you want to call it (laughs) at a dinner with faculty members both of them and servants witnessed emily's paranormal twin appear behind her while she was eating while there the apparition mimicked her every move, minus the utensils, obviously. In another encounter, a student witnessed the bizarre phenomenon occur as she read a story to the haunted educator At the time, Emily was completely bedridden with the flu and was unable to do much more than pop up her head uh, on her pillow. In spite of the inability to move, the student eventually noticed out of the corner of her eye that there was movement occurring behind her. As she turned around, she was greeted with the sight of a copy of Emily walking around the back of the room. She quickly then ran out of the room in horror. Finally, in another instance of the doppelganger's mischief, Emily was helping a student get dressed for an upcoming ball in front of a mirror. While looking into the looking glass, the pupil shrieked when she noticed that there were two Emilys doing up her dress. She reacted quite rationally to the situation by immediately fainting. (laughs) Okay, I have to ask, have you noticed that, like, yeah, I know it's in movies, but the ridiculous, like, significantly... The more people fainted back then than they do today. Have you noticed that? Like in movies or stories, people faint. Have you ever seen someone faint? I mean, I've seen maybe one Actually, person faint. I've, I've, I've seen one and I was in the other room and heard another. Uh, so like one time I was at my friend's house and his wife like was with his mom and they were like cutting vegetables in the kitchen. And then I heard a loud thud and I went back and I, Saw she was on the ground and she just randomly fainted. Right. And, and uh, that... Another one was my friend was laughing so hard when we were doing an anime podcast and he 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 was coughing a lot and he got up to to excuse himself and he just <laughs> really he ran, okay. He, it was like quick though. He like went down for like three seconds and then got back up. He's like, "What well, what happened?" Kind of. I've seen someone faint due to neurological issues, but I've never seen somebody get so scared that they faint. I've never seen that in my entire life. 
it just seemed to happen a lot more back then than it does today. Maybe they were they scared easier back then. I don't know. Or it never happened. Or it never happened. I mean, I don't know what you're saying like that. Like you think like I don't believe in any of this shit. This is all. This is fake as hell. <laughs> this ain't real. Unfortunately for Emily, the nail in the coffin for her career happened during an embroidery class in front of 42 students. Halfway through the lesson, a teacher who was not Emily, who was assigned to supervise the children, decided to step out of the classroom for a few minutes. Immediately after witnessing the faculty member leave, the children immediately noticed that Mademoiselle Saget was sitting in a chair at the front of the class. Most of them just assumed that she had stepped into the room when they weren't looking. At some point, one of the girls looked out the window to escape the unbridled boredom of doily making. <laughs> when they saw something truly bizarre. Emily Saget was both outside of the school picking flowers in the garden and sitting at the front of the classroom. Immediately. Yeah, it's a twin. yeah maybe it's just a twin that she's just screwing with these people. I mean, that'd make, honestly, that would make more sense. That would actually be... I think that would be crazier than the whole doppelganger thing. I think her having a secret twin that she just screwed with people like i think that's why i'm so disinterested in this doppelganger thing because like people are like oh the yeah, other real but i've never actually really seen a doppelganger i haven't either I mean, i've never really been like oh this person looks just like this person the best doppel okay i like i've seen people that have resembled people like mm -hmm. slightly but like not to the point where like oh i can't tell the difference unless they're like legitimately twins so the th reason why I will say doppelgangers are interesting to me, it's but it's it's not because they're a ghostly apparition. I think doppelgangers are interesting if you subscribe to the belief that we live in a simulation. I do actually, but that's the thing. I do believe in that. I I, I do too. To be honest with you, I, I think that would make the most sense. I hundred percent on board with that one. Like, um, but. One of the best, and again, I don't know if this is true or not. It was the story I read on Reddit, but it's at the very least, it's a good story. Um, there was one person who supposedly they came home. It was a normal day. They just came home. They were talking to their fiance. They opened the door to their living room, walked in. Their fiance was in there. And immediately, like out of nowhere, this guy's fiance was saying to him, you know, I can't stand you. I want, this is over. I don't want to be with you anymore. And this was completely out of nowhere. Like there was no precursor, no nothing. And just laid into this guy. She didn't want to watch Fast and Furious or Cars anymore. She <laughs> that must have been enough. it. It's actually she my story. No, it's exhausting. <laughs> this is my last marriage. <laughs> <laughs> like um, I can't do this anymore. Take <laughs> you won't take off the Lightning McQueen quad. The Lightning McQueen Crocs and the third sex, dude. <laughs> The Lightning McQueen. Don't worry. The Lightning McQueen Crocs have been taken off. Turn off the light. <laughs> then they just glow in the dark. <laughs> I was fucking with you. <laughs> they stay on. <laughs> but but anyways, you know this guy is super upset. Doesn't know what to do. His life just basically crashed. So he just gets in his car and goes for a drive. And he comes back, and his wife or sorry his fiance is pulling into the driveway. And, you know, this guy's face is all blotchy red from crying and this and that. And she's like, what the hell is going on? And he explains, like, the whole thing. He's like, you just, like, are you he's pissed off? He's like, are you, are you kidding me? You just told me you're get breaking up with me. Or my life is pretty much over now, as I know it. And she's like, whoa, 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 whoa that never happened. And uh, she's like, I just got home. Like, I was not here. Oh, she's definitely, like, uh, schizophrenic. Or dual multiple personality. And that's one way to look at it too. It's possible. But I'm just saying, like, some people say there's a glitch in the matrix. Yeah. It, you know. So I don't know. It depends how you look at it. You know, someone who like me is gonna look at this and be like, this is BS. Someone who believes in ghosts might look at this and be like, this is a ghost. Um, others might look at it and be like, that's a glitch in the matrix. So different ways to look at it depending on your beliefs. You can frame this however you want. Immediately the pupil pointed this out to all the other students who then proceeded to gasp and become concerned. Two very bold students then cautiously walked up to Emily number two and poked her. According to the young girl, Emily's body felt like a soft fabric-like material. The other girl even accidentally walked through the apparition. And at this point, the figure then disappeared. After the headmaster was notified, 
They immediately pulled Emily in for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. When asked if she recalled noticing anything odd around the time of the latest doppelganger encounter, she said that she had noticed the original supervising teacher was missing from the classroom and had thought to herself that the students were probably getting into mischief without supervision. Lamentably, this event resulted in the number of students attending the academy to drop from 42 to 12 individuals in only 18 months. The school then had no choice but to fire her. But no worries, because she got a good recommendation. Yeah, and just hire Scooby-Doo and the mystery mystery exactly. gang. Mystery <laughs> machine, get it over there so they can unmask her and be like, who's the real apparition? Emily! <laughs> Me and Daphne will go search the bedroom. <laughs> Me, Daphne, and Velma will search the bedroom. Scooby and Shaggy will take the creepy abandoned mansion. Oh, God. Like, Fred, you've been in the bedroom for three hours. Have you found any clues? <laughs> We're still searching, Shaggy. <laughs> Can't you see the ascot on the door? And if you see Nancy arrive at the front door, just let her in. Just let her in and send her in here. <laughs> All right. Was any of this real? No. Spoiler <laughs> alert. No, probably not. The story of Emily Saget. It is quite a curious one, to say the least. We have in front of us a tale of a woman whose doppelganger was not only witnessed by dozens, if not hundreds of people, but also proceeded to negatively impact her career at almost every step of the way. But is it true? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is honestly tough to say, because when you break it all down, out of all the accounts to come from, an 1860s book called Footfalls on the Boundary of Another World, written by Robert Dale Owens... And when you dig deeper than that, you'll quickly realize that his only source was a woman named Julia von Goldstuben. So who was she? <clears throat> As it turns out, Julie was actually one of Emily's pupils at Pet Pen. You say this word. <laughs> Pensionat of New Elk. Thank you. Not only this, but the former student also suggested that she became somewhat close with Emily after she completed her schooling and even visited her. According to Julie, it sounds like Julie is just looking for 15 minutes of fame. It very well could be. According to Julia's herself, she visited Emily's new home, Emily's sister house, where she tutored her nieces and nephews full time. And during the visit, she asked the children if they had noticed anything interesting about their aunt. They proceeded to tell her something to the effect of, we have two Aunt Emilys. Soon after this visit, Emily decided to move to Russia to further pursue her teaching career. After her departure, she was never heard from again. When was the Bolshevik Revolution? <laughs> like 1919, I think. Uh, okay, she, yeah, she was probably gone by then, never mind. Let me just double check. What was going 1917 on? 1917 in... to 1923. What was going on in Russia around 1850? Do you know? Was it the Crimean War was going on? 1853 to 1856. Yeah, that was going on. To be fair, Russia's a big country. So, I mean, imagine if you went to Moscow. It would make the most sense if you're a teacher and you're, you'd probably go to the scholarly capital of the country, which I'd imagine would be Moscow. Okay, in order to believe this story, you're going to have to put a lot of faith in Julia and not ask for a lot of evidence. The reason being is the simple fact that there really isn't a lot to go off of in this tale. Specifically, it appears as though there isn't any official records of any of the previously mentioned experiences occurring. Furthermore, <clears throat> there also isn't a birth certificate associated with a woman named Emily Saget, who was born in Dijon, France in 1813, nor a death certificate. Despite this, it is worth noting that there was a birth certificate created on behalf of an individual from Dijon, France, in 1813, named Octavie Chaget. It is possible she changed her name to help her get hired? Maybe. I mean, Maybe actually... they just picked a random name that also, like, how many castles are there? There's probably more than just your family. No, one and only. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we're Googling castle. There's probably a lot. There's two S's, two L's. Hell, there's, there's Sam Cassell, and you look nothing like him. Google Sam Cassell. <laughs> Sam Cassell. I bet you he's devilishly handsome. <laughs> <laughs> we look identical. Man, it's like looking at my twin, man. 
Who says I don't have a doppelganger? How, how dare you, sir? <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Here we go. As you can probably imagine, all kinds of theories have been tossed around to explain the case of this haunted educator. Some have chalked it up to a mischievous spirit who had latched itself onto Emily sometime throughout her youth. Others believe that Emily inadvertently utilized the ability of bilocation, which is essentially ventriloquism, but instead of projecting your voice, you are manifesting your energy elsewhere to get more done. So this is like astral traveling, kind what of. This, Harry Potter, dude? Uh, yeah, so you can like leave your body and go on. This is a little different, though, because astral, proje um, astral traveling, astral projecting is kind of, you can float around anywhere in the world or potentially even the universe, but I don't think you can physically, like, interact with things. Um, bilocation is almost like somehow splitting your energy and being able to accomplish more than one thing. It's almost like having a second you to go do things for you to make you more productive. So that's what bilocation is, if you didn't know what that is. I think if that... If you had a second you, what would you make him do? I think I'd just have him torture you 24-7. I would literally have him bother God, you. what if that's what's happening right now? What if you're literally doing something productive, like being with your wife or like, I don't know, something like... Something productive, and then this is the second shitty you, and you're just <laughs> ruining my life. Turns out the army is like very nice. It would never even do anything to you. Although this part of me is very nice too. You're really not. Though. So what did Emily have to say about all this? You know, we have all these people kind of accusing well, her of just, all this stuff. We just, we just confirmed she's not real. We, we didn't confirm that she's not real. Yeah, there's no existence of her except an Octavi. Octavi. Right. That could, a... that could be her. But it's probably not. It probably isn't. I agree. But it could be her. We just, we just talked about how there's so many castles out there. You think there's not many Seges? I don't know. I'm just saying. This is... I didn't... And this is know. all going off of uh, Jennifer or whatever her name's... Julia. Julia. That's what all these stories are, typically. It's just... You gotta have faith. I don't have any. But that, according to the legend herself, she claims that nothing extraordinary happened to her in her youth to explain a spirit following her around, nor was she purposely projecting another version of herself into reality. Ultimately... She simply believed that she was unlucky enough to have a completely unexplainable condition that ultimately cost her her job time and time again. Ironically, in the end, Emily had the ability to do something that we all wish that we could do at least at one point in our life, and that is to be in two places at once. For most of us, this would probably make, probably make us more productive, but for Emily, it would completely destroy her career. Isn't that ironic? I would say if my other self would be down for like a little, you know what I'm saying? Like a little hand for hand, like a little, hey, I help you, you help me situation. Like, oh, God. just be like, you down, dude? Like, <laughs> oh, so that's what I feel like. <laughs> oh, God. I have a strong grip. <laughs> oh, God. Bet she has a firm handshake, too. <laughs> That's a firm handshake, son. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Just saying. I'm being honest, though. Honestly, uh, like, that probably happened. So that you wouldn't is be curious? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be kind of wondering, why the hell is there another me here? I think that'd be more important. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Okay, so we... We don't believe this, right? I mean, no. No. Okay, thank you. I, we don't. No one, no. You don't we believe don't. in anything, though. So, like, my opinion actually matters. Yours is just, like... Like, I, t I could tell you the sky's blue, and you're like, no, it's not. You're just that unfun. No, when we talk about aliens, I give you all the, the ammo you could want. I'm like, yes, I believe this. Although, we the Here last one we... The, butt. the last one we talked about was tech, that was had aliens involved it was the Denver airport, right? I think that's what it was. Were there aliens in that one? There were people that suggested there were aliens underneath it, you know, using it as like a UFO base kind of thing with the military. Mm. Uh, I don't believe in that to be fair, but I think every other Wait, alien so one believe, we talked about. Do you believe Air area 51 is covering up aliens? Do you think they have like alien technology in that base? Or, the like I don't know. The, the reason why is I believe aliens, but I don't. I don't know if I believe that aliens do would actually work with us. Do you believe the U.S. government 
has ever worked with aliens or recovered alien technology like at Roswell? I do not believe they've ever worked with aliens, but I'm on the fence about them actually having alien technology because there's some crazy advances that we made after the supposed crash at Roswell. Um, I don't think aliens would ever work with us, if I'm being 100% honest with you. The well, only no, way... We're their, we're their science experiment. We're their the, little ant farm that, like, won first prize at the science fair. The only way I could see aliens, quote-unquote, working with us is to basically help control their experiment. Because no one's going to, you know, we're not going to listen to them. We're going to be scared as hell. But if they can convince, you know, our leaders and stuff to do it, then, you know. So, as promised earlier, though... We did talk, um, I did mention we have some Reddit stories to talk about that are doppelgangers. Um, so you want to read one? I'll read one. I got two here. I am ready. I will read Hypnotic Bacon 28th story. All righty. All righty. Shout out to your username, Hypnotic Bacon 28. Excuse me. He states, and I quote, I've had more than I care to, currently living at my dad's house, and there's one here that seems to like the basement. If I go to the furthest corner of the basement alone for any reason at night, it's more likely to come upstairs that night to reveal itself, usually by walking around so its footsteps are clear. It used to mimic a specific cat we used to have from that far corner of the basement and only at night when I'm the only one still awake. This stopped when the cat died. It has mimicked my entire immediate family. I was at home alone early one morning before my dad got home from work when I heard it in my sister's room, sounding like her, talking to one of the cats. He must have really like had a bond with that cat. I'm sorry your cat died. One night, while I was still in high school and we had a computer in the kitchen, I heard my dad talking to me and turned around to see nobody there. Another night, it decided to mimic a cat we had that liked jumping on some cases of pop after I got up from the computer to grab a drink. I saw no cat there, but I watched the cardboard cave in... Wait, what? Okay. I saw no cat there, but I watched the cardboard cave in from the wait as I passed by. I moved back to his house in late June this year. My first Sunday back, I woke up around 5 a.m. from a nightmare about a demon mimicking people, possessing the person it imitated. Walk, walking their body into a secluded location, leaving their body and scaring them further into the, and scaring them further into the location to kill them without their body being found. It did this to hundreds throughout the nightmare. After the last one, I bolted upright in bed and heard from a couple of feet away my own heavy breathing out of pace with my own heavy breathing as though to mock me. It stayed invisible and walked through the bedroom door toward the kitchen. I got up, unlocked the door, and looked around the house to make sure those footsteps weren't my dad. He was sound asleep. Hmm. Last month, we had a thunderstorm, and one night, after hearing a loud thud in the direction of my dad's office, I went to check on him. I saw him going outside, closing the front door behind him, and so I followed. However, that door was still locked, and I didn't hear his footsteps, the knob moving, or even the lock. This all seemed very unlike him, too, knowing that I was still home and all. So I check on his office, and he's still in there messing around on his laptop like normal. Creepy. So I, I actually talked to this person, which you can read down there after this. Oh, yeah. Additional correspondence from the author. Hypnotic Bacon 28 also later adds, and I quote, Oh, I remember this one now. I still won't go into the basement at night because of this. My nieces won't go down there alone at all now after hearing about it, even though it only ever shows itself once the sun has gone down. Never while there's still daylight. End quote. So uh, I talked to this person, and they claim it's a doppelganger. They put this in a doppelganger thread. and so But yeah, so I was talking to this person, and um, I kind of, what I got out of this was, and I guess depending on what you believe, it can be the same thing. But I kind of actually got this as being more of a skinwalker than You're a saying it's a windigo, huh? Yeah, because he says that, uh, you know, it was his cat and it was his dad and it was all the other members of his family. You know, a doppelganger is more of like... A shapeshifter. Well, it, yeah, a doppelganger is more of like, I have my doppelganger. It follows me around, or it doesn't. It just goes and does its own thing. You know, maybe I can it, see that. I can so see that's a doppelganger. 
to me to me this also to me looks like a skinwalker maybe this guy lives at skinwalker ranch maybe i mean you know this guy uh he told me that he's a very active poster in here you know he he really believes in a lot of the supernatural stuff which is awesome um but yeah he uh he this is a an experience i don't think i would want to have personally and like he said yeah he won't go in the basement um at night so i I don't blame him i don't think i would either i've also i talked to him i was like i don't i've never heard of the idea of a doppelganger living in your basement you know what i mean i mean to be fair i've never heard of a skinwalker living in your basement either i've never heard of anything like that. i mean maybe it's like his dream maybe it's a demon dude could be maybe maybe uh you know i wonder if i wonder if he's ever experienced like sleep paralysis why does this one say unauthorized like they didn't give you permission oh that's their name Oh, okay. That's her username. So why no, do you I, say permission granted? What was that? Because I had a lot of stories, and I wanted to keep track of the one. Did, I didn't anyone, actually... did anyone deny you? Uh, people just didn't respond. Hmm. No one outright denied me. Just people don't respond, which I don't blame them, because you get those chat requests, and you're like, nah, I'm not doing that. So I don't blame them. All right. Let's get into unauthorized story. All right. So according to Unauthorized, which this was found uh, also on the Paranormal subreddit, this happened about 12 to 13 years ago when I was about six to seven years old. I'd like to start off and set the scene. My parents were not religious, and at this point in time, I hadn't been exposed to much religious subject matter, nor did I actually believe people could die. I thought that ghosts and things were dumb. My father also used to work at night since he was the only one able to work due to my mom's declining health, both physically and mentally. I am very sorry to hear that. Uh, We lived in a rented two-story house where the kitchen looked out into an open living room. That night, I was sitting on the counter as my mother was feeling well enough to pour me some milk and just in general bond with me before I went to bed to head to school the next morning. There was absolutely nothing weird about that day or night besides what happened. As she was pouring me milk, I was looking out into the living room, just sitting and waiting when I turned my head and saw my dad standing there. I remember how confused I was because not a moment before I was looking there and then another moment he's standing there. I didn't think it was too strange at first because it, well, it was my dad. I expected him to approach or say something, but he never did. He just stood there and stared at us, arms at his side, just looking at us. He didn't blink once. His expression was completely neutral, but his eyes were just open enough I could see across the room he was staring at us. It was weird at first, just waiting for him to say something to me, but he never did. He just stood there, and I kept staring back, and it started to scare me, especially when the longer I looked at him, the more just wrong he looked. His eyes were too small. It looked like him just kind of off. He stood there long enough. I'm sorry. He stood there long enough, and I started rubbing my eyes and blinking, thinking I was seeing things, but he just kept standing there, on moving, until after one of my blinks, he just disappeared. That's what scared me more than anything. With how the room disappeared in front of him, or what? Yeah. So uh, I believe I'm. I apologize, but I believe this was a woman, um, if I remember correct. Um, So she is just looking at her father. And kind of like waiting for him to move, you know, do something like show me some life. And, you know, naturally she, you know, well, she's blinking kind of be like, okay, I'm like, I don't know, just trying to make sure this is real. And after she blinks, one of these times she opens her eyes and he's gone. Didn't, didn't like run away. Didn't hear anything. Just gone. Not there anymore. So uh, let's see with how the room was late. Oh, sorry. That's what scared me more than anything. With how the room was laid out and how creaky the floors were, for him to even move as fast as he did, he'd have had to open one of the doors next to him and slam it shut for it to be possible for him to just disappear as fast as he did. There was no way he could run away that fast, especially with how open the living room was. I didn't notice it at first when he first appeared, but our floors creaked loudly every time someone walked around, even if they were as light-footed as they could be. I refused to go over to that area for the remaining few months before we moved after my mom passed away from suicide on the way to the incident. Again, apologies for that. That's that's probably worse than anything in this story. Um, 
which I discovered after writing up the original version of this. I would have chalked this up to being my my mind tricks. Sorry. I would have chalked this up to being my mind playing tricks on me if my mom hadn't also told my dad about this experience. I never said a word to my mom. I only looked at her and thought she didn't see it. But looking back, I am pretty sure I saw her turn and also look not long after I started staring at whatever it was. I only found out many years later, my mom had seen it when I was telling my dad about the experience and he mentioned she told him. But because my mom had a long history of being mentally ill, it was brushed off. The experience really scared me to the point that I started to sleep with the lights on until about a few years ago. I thankfully, I thankfully never seen anything quite like it since. So hopefully that stays close or stays the case. I'm sorry. Stays the case. Yeah. That's a, that is scary. Yeah. And it's very sad again. Um, but tragedy, I'm sorry, but yeah, no, I mean, I won't lie. When I was first reading the story and she said, Oh, my dad was staring at me. I think we've all been very guilty of just disassociating and just kind of like, staring into you know into blank space you know and just kind of zoning out you know out of reality for a little bit i know i i've done that i probably do that on a daily basis to be honest but i will admit you know like like she says you know yeah that's weird very weird that he's just sitting there staring i think we've all been there done that for one reason or another but the fact that he just is gone it just disappeared no noise, no door slamming, no footsteps, no nothing. And she also mentioned that his eyes were like too small, which is that, yeah, like a little too small or smaller than normal, which that's bizarre because I guess, again, like we are talking about doppelgangers, but again, it, it almost wonder, makes me wonder if it was like a skinwalker because aren't skinwalkers like they're never a perfect copy. Like there's always something or even like a demon, actually like a demon. I don't um, know the, the complete lore of skinwalkers. Like I know if a demon, for example, um, emulates a person, uh, they supposedly can't do an exact copy. There's always going to be something slightly wrong. Um, Source. So like with the Sally house, for example, um, remember the set, we, the Sally house with the little girl, yeah um well there's this is actually where i kind of learned this like during that whole endeavor um sally didn't look quite right like yes she's a little girl but apparently if you looked at her long enough you could start to notice certain things were off according to some sources oh i remember the husband said something like that right so going by that logic i guess i could see that as you know oh the eyes are too small i mean i don't know but but it's just something interesting to kind of think about. And, you know, like it kind of depends where you stand on doppelgangers. Like, do you think a doppelganger is a demon? Do you think a doppelganger is just a, do- that, a doppelganger? Do you think it's a glitch of the matrix? Do you think it's, you know, a ghost? Whatever. Um, both of these stories to me actually kind of sound like skinwalkers to a degree. Yeah, I'd, I'd, we'd have to, I would have to do some more research on skinwalkers because I really don't know too much about it. But I could, well, I could see where you're coming from. We'll eventually do an episode on Skinwalker Ranch. I know it's not just about Skinwalkers. A lot more stuff that goes on there. Other things, Skinwalkers. Can we do I, a, an episode on Ram Ranch? Ram Ranch? Hmm, Google it. Ram Ranch. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, we could do it on Ram Ranch. Why not? I figured it was something like that, but yeah, we could do it. Sweet. Right after the episode about Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nancy. Oh, God. Why don't you plug away this time, Fernando? Thank you guys for tuning in, if you did. Uh, Honestly, this one was an interesting case of doppelgangers. Um, I I have a hard time believing in doppelgangers, personally, just because I've never really seen one or have heard of people seeing one. Uh, If you do believe in it, let us know in the comments. If not, uh, also let us know in the comments. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for watching. We also have uh, a YouTube channel for our gaming content where we put out videos usually on Sundays and sometimes during the weekday. That's You Go First Gaming at YouTube. Or on YouTube, just search at You Go First Gaming. Uh, you'll know you hit us when you find a video 
called Slide in the Woods, and it's like <laughs> thirty thousand views or something. It's our our minute of fame, pretty much. But we got a we got a decent little following. We got about two hundred forty ish subscribers. I'm gonna say ish because we it fluctuates. We lose yeah, them. We can lose some. <laughs> But come and be our friend. Come subscribe. Also subscribe to this podcast. Uh, we do have better episodes, I will I will say. Uh, and we got good stuff coming on the way. I, I Believe me, we got more killer content coming. Uh, so let us know. Leave us a like on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. And just stay spooky out there. Yeah. All right. What well, do you have for us? What do I have? Oh, so you're turning the table to me for final thoughts. Final thoughts. Uh, my final thoughts are, you know, I'm just having fun with this. I'm really excited for, uh, you know, I'm not going to, I've been thinking a lot about spooky season coming up, depending if you're like me, spooky season starts the day after 4th of July, because Halloween is the next big holiday, really. All right, everybody have a great night and remember to stay spooky and stay spookiest.